You know, I spend a lot of time on my computer, and when I'm on the computer, generally what I'm doing is either editing video, which is not a huge amount of the time, but when I'm not doing that, I would estimate over 90% of the time that I spend on a computer is inside of a web browser, usually Google Chrome. I've owned a Chromebook, a dedicated web browsing device before, but it's been the original one, like the Google Chromebook CR40, I think is what it was called. I gave that to my dad, who gave that to my niece, and so on and so forth, but I never actually bought another one for whatever reason until this week. They started using them in schools and everything, and when I saw a deal on one pop up, I figured my son might actually be interested in using one himself, so I thought I'd give it a shot myself first, just to see if it's any good. And I know it's not going to be absolutely amazing because it was ridiculously cheap, but I picked this guy up. This is the Epic 11.6 inch Chromebook. And so to make this fun and interesting, I thought what I would do, we'll go ahead and go through the unboxing process, and then tomorrow morning, whenever I start my day, I'm going to be doing things on my normal work laptop, but the only things I'm going to do using that laptop are specifically work things outside of the browser. So if I'm doing any sort of software development or anything, I'll do that on my work laptop just to keep it all separate. But anything else I do, email, web browsing, Netflix, YouTube, anything like that, it's all going to be on the Chromebook, if it works. It'll be a fun experiment, right? So let's unbox this, talk about its specs and features and everything, and the price. So I'd never actually even heard of this brand of Chromebook or even that it existed before just a few days ago. I saw it pop up on actually the Walmart app. I'm always browsing that thing just to see if there's any pickup discounts or anything, and this happened to be in one of their sales and I think it's actually still the same price I paid. Retail price on this is $180, $179. I got it for $109 shipped, plus tax. So the expectations, the bar has to be set pretty low here. So let's get started taking a look at it. Here we have the Epic 11.6 inch Chromebook, some specifications here on the back, up to eight and a half hours of battery life, both 2.4 and five gigahertz Wi-Fi. You get 100 gigs free on Google Drive, has an 11.6 inch display that's only 1366 by 768, but at that screen size, that's that's not a terrible resolution. Built-in virus protection, it's, it's Chrome. Boots in seconds, again, it's just loading. Really lightweight Linux OS with Chrome on top of it, so it makes sense. And Bluetooth 4.0. Ticks a decent amount of boxes, and again, super low price and something that my kid can probably use. So inside the box. Over here, I would assume is the power brick, and I would assume correctly. Really small barrel connector on this end, and it says it outputs 12 volts at 2 amps, which is why it's not a USB adapter. I always seem to ask the question, why is this not a USB adapter? Although interestingly enough, maybe you noticed it before I did, this plug seems to be upside down. All the plugs in my house are upside down, so it's, it's gonna be fine. And presumably the only other thing in this box, oh, I presumed wrong. So underneath the laptop, Chromebook, we've got some product information, a user guide, some epic learning stuff. And yeah, the little user guide here is basically just telling you how to power it on, how to turn it on, how to log in. I think this is actually assuming that like a grandmother or grandfather is going to be buying this for their grandkid. So it's walking through how to create a Google account and everything. And then right here at the end, we have all the specs. CPU, it is a rock chip RK3288. So it's actually, I think that was released in 2014, but it has four gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of built-in storage, 802.11 AC. And you can see listed down here, a bunch of ports and everything, audio jack, HDMI, USB, and a micro SD card slot. It's worth a shot, right? A hundred bucks. And again, it's from Walmart. So the absolute worst case scenario, if it just does not work, if it's way too slow or anything, you can take it back, no questions asked. Well, one question asked, is there something wrong with it? Yes, it's terrible, return it. But hopefully that's not going to happen. I did do a little bit of looking around online and there were some pretty decent reviews on these laptops, Chromebooks. But anyway, here it is. This is the Epic Chromebook 11.6. Taking a look around the outside, I see a micro SD card slot, USB port, three and a half millimeter headphone jack, nothing on the back. I'm always a big fan of that. USB port, full size HDMI port, and then the power plug over here on the other side and nothing on the front. And it's a reasonably small size in the hand. If I had to guess, it's probably just ever so slightly smaller than my 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is not in the room at the moment. Oh well. And then when we open it up, pull that out of the way. It's got a little thing here that says register now for access to the Epic support team. And there you can see what it looks like. So keyboard, touchpad. At this price point, I'm gonna assume that the screen is not a touch screen. I'm like 99% certain it's not. Little reminder of some of the specs over here, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4 and up to eight hours of battery life. And then the power button right here. So if we go ahead and hit the power button, so I'm gonna go ahead and hold the power button and it appears the battery is dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this plugged in and charging. And before I do the first boot or anything, I'll turn the camera back on and probably just point it directly at the laptop. Chromebook, you know. 
And as I probably should have expected, no sooner did I plug it in as it actually came up. So this is what it looked like after the first boot. It says over here, it's got 89% battery left. So for some reason, it just didn't want to come up. Because yeah, I can unplug it now and it's still working. And I can only assume it's going to work like the other Chromebooks that I've touched, where basically you put it online, you sign in, and you're good to go. Keyboard, so far not bad. Just little tiny seconds here that I've touched it. I can see on the camera display, there's some weirdness going on with the screen right here, but that changes depending on the angle that you put this. So it's just not really liking the, the screen, but it looks fine here in person. Let me go ahead and sign in, give it my two-factor authentication there. Choose picture, profile, photo, and it says, howdy, welcome to the Chrome family. This is no ordinary computer. This Chrome device was designed to deliver the best experience of the web to you. We can take a tour just to see what's changed. Play, edit, and share and get stuff done. You can get all your apps from the launcher. Showed a tray over here with all the stuff in it. Have fun, we're here for you. And then obviously it's gonna open Chrome up. It says you can do video chat and phone calls. Yeah, this is just gonna be a tour of everything else. Redeem your free Google Drive storage. Listen to music, free apps, edit photos. Speaking of apps actually, this is one of the things that I don't think this is actually going to do. It says Android apps over here. Install Android apps on your Chromebook. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work on this one. It works on some of them, but not all. Let me just check. Yeah, I don't see anything that mentions the Google Play stuff. Enable Bluetooth is disabled, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. So yeah, unfortunately it doesn't look like this device is gonna support Android apps but not a big deal from where I'm standing. But again, you've got some info over here about app replacements and web apps and connecting Bluetooth devices, how to print and how to work with photos and stuff. This actually does an awful lot more than the last Chromebook that I ever worked with, but that's, that's kind of obvious there. So I click on the little apps button here. It takes me to what appears to be an app drawer inside of Chrome. I can of course open up Chrome. And as far as all that stands, it looks just like Chrome on my other devices. But anyway, at this point, like I was saying, I'm gonna go ahead and let this device continue charging. Then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get up fresh, start using this as my primary web browsing, web surfing device for the day. And we'll see how it works. Alrighty, the next day begins. I've got both of my laptops here pulled up. My work laptop, which I'm gonna go ahead and close now, and we're gonna try not to open that again. And then the Chromebook itself. I did spend a little bit of time with this last night, so I've got some very early impressions of it. One, sort of first and foremost here, it's a $100 Chromebook, so it's not going to be ultra high-end anything, which means the screen is kind of terrible. It means the viewing angles are really, really bad. It gets decently bright, and the colors look okay, a little bit washed out. But again, because of the viewing angles and the way that I've got my desk set up here, I'm above it, so I'm looking down onto it, which means that I have to tilt it way back to be able to actually see it. If I had it at eye line level, it would probably be okay. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I also watched a YouTube video or two on it yesterday, and the speakers are just terrible. They're absolute garbage. But you can always use that 3.5mm plug, and it works appropriately. Put a speaker or a pair of headphones or something on it, it'd be fine. For what I'm going to be doing, I think this will work just fine, and because it does have eight and a half hours of battery life, supposedly. I'm gonna go completely wireless and we will see how it works. I think I forgot to mention there, I do also have all my work stuff signed in here. It's a Chromebook, so I can always just completely wipe it if I absolutely need to. So I can do my day job stuff on here, I can do my YouTube stuff on here, and with a simple push of a couple of buttons, I can swap back and forth seamlessly between my accounts. So I can get to my personal stuff and then click a button again, back to my work stuff. Really, really convenient. I do keep a lot of tabs open in both sides of the browser here. And even though it does have four gigs of RAM, that processor is slowing it down significantly. So it does, let's say lag and chug just a little bit, but is it worth a hundred dollars? I'm gonna spend a few hours with it and we'll see. And as a bit of a test, I went ahead and plugged the Chromebook into HDMI to my TV. And as you can see, it is working over HDMI. And if I go ahead and hit the display button up here, it does show 1080p. So even though the laptop screen is 1366 by 768, it is capable of outputting 1080p to a display. This is a 4K display, but it's only outputting 1080p. Let's see how it works with playing video back at 1080p on an external display. So if I just go over to my own channel, watch my most recent video at the moment. may or may not have heard, but probably did. Apple is having their... Okay, so it doesn't like 1080p 60, and that's what it's defaulted to and trying to play. I have tested this briefly, like I said, and it'll do 1080p video playback. It prefers 720. I tried 4K. I went to MKBHD's channel and tried a 4K video, and it just absolutely said no. Let's see, 720p 60. ...conference this week, and one of the major announcements, in my opinion, it's a major announcement to me because... It's taken some time, and it's lagging a little bit. So video is in sync. Everything Black looks fine. Of course, because it's an external display, the colors look fine as well. And you can use all the same keys you'd use to interact with Chrome like you normally would. It just doesn't seem to be a fan of anything 1080p or higher. But again, the screen that's built into it is not 1080p, so that's to be expected. Yeah, see, it's slow. 
figured I'd also try out Bluetooth. So I've got this pair of Bluetooth headphones I just reviewed. If I go to Bluetooth, I see EP750 down here and it just connected. And as you can probably hear, it is playing back through Bluetooth now. So that works. And I actually just noticed over here, it says cast devices available. So I can click on that and it does allow me to do Chromecasting to other devices that support it. And if I come back in this section and click on the little Bluetooth icon, I can actually change all my audio settings live. So I can change the output to either this internal speaker or my Bluetooth headphones, and then the input to either the internal mic or the Bluetooth microphone, which presumably this would all work just the same if you had like a USB microphone plugged in. And quickly testing out Netflix here. Seems to be working just fine. Yes, I'm watching BoJack Horseman for the first time, but the quality looks good. I see the new season of Orange is the New Black just came out. It's not a sponsor in any way. Really looking forward to that. So yeah, Netflix on there actually plays super smooth. A whole lot smoother than YouTube does by default. So big thumbs up there. Well, I've actually spent quite a few hours working on this thing at this point. I'll be entirely honest here. I've spent probably three to four hours working on it off and on over the course of the day. I'm currently at about 50% battery left. Like I said, three or four off and on. So probably about two hours of solid use. Going back and forth between profiles, playing videos and whatnot. So it's looking like instead of eight to eight and a half hours of battery life, you're probably going to see in the neighborhood of maybe five to six, which again is not terrible for a hundred dollar device. But while I'm thinking about it, I did mention earlier that it would probably be better served by hooking this up to an external speaker. And I just so happen to have some speakers over there, like entirely too many speakers. So let me parlay this into another video. I'm gonna go ahead and do the unboxing and, the, and all the stuff about that other video and test that speaker out with the Chromebook. Most of that will be in the other video. And just a few minutes later, yeah, that speaker actually did make a pretty significant difference in the sound quality on this little laptop. Yes, I'm watching Philly D. Although the video about this went in kind of a weird direction, so make sure to check that video out when it does become available. Maybe you should subscribe to get notified when it happens. Anyway, this thing just went under 50% battery remaining, so I'm probably going to stop using it hardcore and wait until my son gets home to see what he thinks about it. He's got some online things for school, some online math and reading programs that he does that I think this would be absolutely perfect for, so I'm gonna see how it works for him. I'll let you guys see that, and then we'll wrap things up. Apparently it works appropriately well for YouTube. And there's online math and reading and learning things that he can do with it too, so it'll be good. And a few days later we come back. Sorry my voice sounds pretty rough. I've got a little bit of a cold. To wrap this up about the Chromebook, to sum up my thoughts and feelings on it, I'm going to equate it to an old junker truck. And that sounds terrible, I know. But an old junker truck, something you can get super, super cheap, can serve a variety of purposes. It's not gonna be the prettiest thing you've ever seen. It's not gonna be the fastest thing out there on the roads. But when you need it, when you need to get from point A to point B, when you need to pick up a treadmill at Walmart and bring it to your home, that old junker truck is gonna be there for you. Much in the same vein, when you just need to get on the internet very quickly. You just need a web browser. You just need to very quickly send out an email. You just very quickly need to upload a picture that you took and you had it on your micro SD card or anything like that. Maybe you just want to watch a quick YouTube video or do your online shopping or do your grocery list. I could go on and on. Having something like this that you can just keep plugged in and when you need it, grab it for a hundred bucks is absolutely a steal in my opinion. So I'm gonna put a link to where you can find this down below. I did just check it and it is still $109 right now over at Walmart. It is still receiving updates. It actually received a new update to Chrome just the other day. It was like 59 and it started at 58. Pretty decent UI overhaul there. So because it is Chrome that's updating, it's not actually Epic that's having to do anything. I think it's got a decent life left in it. So again, links down below. Thank you guys as always for watching. And again, if you have not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you do get notified whenever I put out new videos, which may not have as many coming for the next few days because of this, but I do have the one about the speakers. So be on the lookout for that too. But thank you guys again. We'll see you next time.